Tā tā kā ar švādam. Saila tā kā ar spārča ha viņa lādžā. Visi šaiju tīnsaim šādžā. Tīnsaim tā kā ar spākvi pāča dačāj. Kvarbeti būhā dačāj. Far Cry Primal, a game set all the way back in 10,000 BCE in Central Europe, my first Far Cry game, and one of the most interesting and intricate games of all time to me, and probably one of, if not in the grandstand because of it being my first Far Cry game, a game I indulged in a lot of time in while I was working at a movie theater, probably would be my favorite Far Cry game going downhill, but regardless of that, it is a very peak game when it comes down to the case of its world, setup, style, gameplay, funniness, and considerably a very simply but at the same time compelling in some symbolic form story that attaches multiple cool aspects of the world that is surrounded by beasts, predators, and killers trying to take you out and is all about the matter of survival to the fullest. A game that I believe any person, regardless if they played Far Cry before or not, can get into. With its dope character study, with a great protagonist like Takar, and in general, just a defined showcasing of a lot of aspects that are good for a video game that is separating itself from the main genre that is its series, but still stays true to the roots and builds off of it in a very interesting way. I hope you guys will enjoy this analysis of Far Cry Primal, and as you see in the title, why Far Cry Primal is the most underappreciated game in the series. Far Cry Primal starts with Takar, in his case of, I guess you could say, Hunt Pack, with his brother hunting a mammoth for food. It introduces us into the type of environment that the Windsor brothers, in this case, Takar and his brother, have to go through to go ahead and eat and survive. The introduction is cool, so like it immerses you very well. The graphics of this game, this game being a 2016 game, obviously we're playing this on PlayStation 4, not on PlayStation 5 or anything, but regardless from different looks I've seen, it's still beautiful, astonishing, mesmerful, bro. Peak case of game in multiple forms, man. It is a very defined case of matter of game and graphics and their showcasing. And if you haven't played it, obviously with analyzation, you should. And it makes you really feel like a caveman. It makes you feel embedded into the lifestyle that is Dakar and his pack of brothers. But as well, with this big case of matter of showcasing and arrival of the lifestyle that Dakar lives, with the case of his brothers, in this case of matter of Wolfpack, it is a great shine as well of a great case of culture of people and characters on multi-case and matter of unique stands. This really makes me like the story so much more because simply put, the story of Taka is very interesting for multiple form of reasons. Taka, simply put, is a man that lost his brother in the mix of hunting when a tiger, aka tigre, with being a blood fang saber tooth tiger that later on you can try to go ahead and tame after beating and putting it out of his commission damn there. But I'll talk about that more. And now he looks to go to the land of Oros as his people have been split apart and been killed, slaughtered, eaten, possibly raped and pillaged of their stuff to go ahead and go forth on the means of traveling many suns and moons to get to the land of Oros. The peak is part of Central Europe, which is where this game takes place, like I said. And pretty much, he tries to go ahead and gather a great deal of people to make a better form of land, gather strength, forge, but a matter of purpose, just pretty much survive with his people. But he faces two rival case of matter of clans of people. Udam, cannibalistic creatures of the night like shit it seems like by the case of the drawing on the case of the wall where it's said that they plan to exterminate and bring like a zilla darkness to the winja the reason why the udam are in conflict with the winja is a very considerable i guess you could say deep thing but it isn't obvious with how iconic far cry is with his protagonist duo with the antagonist and the counter thing, the opposition and the psychological distress that comes with the protagonist and opposite credit of cracking at the skin and at the same time mental of the antagonist. This game is set in a time where even though it has cool credit of antagonist and dilemma, the dilemma is a lot more inner and set in stone, kind of simplistic. And I'm not trying to disperse it of having its very 
cool and intricate setup for why characters do what they do in this regard or not but don't expect a sense of Oz where it's a very crazy and interesting and compelling and complex narrative of a man making another man become arguably more worse than him because simply put he has did so much to get to him making a person go through the trials and errors and insanity and at the same time, other case in matter of games in the Fargo franchise that I have not played, but from what I've heard, salvage a great deal of busting because of how interstellar and more diverse and, I guess, of different substance matter of the whole take of making the antagonist be the front and cover the shine of the greatest storytelling in the game, but also having the protagonist break a little different case of spice from how much of a great antagonist that these characters are. So, with this being said, the Udam mixed with Azila, both are case of great antagonist form pressure to Winja because the Winja are so small and so weak and they seem as feeble people that can be thrown to the side and be took in as like prey. The Udam are these Viroj barbaric case of matter of primal people that you would think for the case of the world saying caveman times. They want to kill the Winja because of the fact that they are dying and at the same time sick. They live in cold, harsh lands, and taking out the wind jaw is another way to kind of explode and expand their people beyond the case of the harsh lands that they come from. It's also a sense of the fact that because they see that wind jaw as people are healthy, have maybe a credit of better sense of technology in mind, if they eat them because they are cannibals, they will grow to have the same fundamental. Obviously, this is objectively insane, but because of the time and no offense look at their leader this nigga's a crash out it's not too surprising that they would come to this alternative and so this is why you see multi case matter of winja eaten butchered beaten to a pulp and multi disgusting devourment of human skin when they're eating or the reason why they look the way they do or simply put sickness now sickness grows in multiple forms and this is a time where people cannot cure unfortunate Ring of different unfortunate and bad and they have been put for the ringer from disease cold harshness in the fact that this is 10,000 BCE and like with someone like Da who you defeat and bring to your people and make him one of yours in the case of matter of wind job for the credit of getting greater form help in the masses of power and other stuff makes him come to you with different case of matter of bar and purpose and things and there's a great showcasing of humanity and the fine case of I would say character arc for Da and Takar an opposite and when Da dies of a tumor you really feel bad for him regardless if he was your enemy he was like chiefed into the Udam right but regardless though of that as well Zila is the fire group aka the case people that squirt people in the name of sun god religious matter of takings they do some aztec level case of matter of crazy antics to get the job done against the winja and they are led by someone like batari who with her people fears grazi this ancient sun god greater magical mystical halves of stuff and far cry prime i would say is can see in line of the story of Far Cry, even though all these games are connected in some considerable sense, but are not paved in stone by the means of a cohesive, confined, defined story. Zila represent a sense of craven antics from a religious and sporadic figure, especially since Batari represents a person that will manipulate, control different setups of different things to spew the greatest sense of out of pocket see and fuck shit into play to make about the greatest sense of path and control of power like on some Citra shit which I don't know if that's supposed to be the parody because she kind of moves has the body figure and look and deliberately is kind of moving like Citra but the difference between her and Citra to me is the fact that with Citra she has a very defined sense of purpose and feel voice actress and representation what she does and the whole sexual tension mix arousal and the pleasures of being an ultimate warrior for her come a lot more set in stone but tari is pretty much a control freak and entitled bitch and deserves to go ahead and suffer by the hands of takar especially because what she does to people is pretty much just out of just 
means of evil fuck shit. No, Granted, no. both groups are evil, but to me, the Udam will always be a little bit more interesting and arguably compelling because at least Wait. from Uls and their people's perspective and a little bit more humanized of them, they see their reasoning as being a grandstand reason to go ahead and do because they are dying. They're the unfortunate opposition that do shit because of their unfortunate situation. Azila do for power broker and Udam are willing to destroy Winja as a whole to get what they want. Azila can put them in the crossfire. Tenza is really more of a emotional person in this regard to them because how he was treated and him being burned and treated badly to them in most cases a matter of people in the Winja are suffering because of his old demon. But this doesn't hurt as much to me as like what the Udam did because the Udam have an indirect case of matter of pressure on Winja in the showcasing of when they came and attacked the tribe of the Winja, which I will go ahead and play for y'all in the regards of how compelling that is to me when it comes down to the unfortunate sadness of it. But as well, with that being said, when they show stuff like that for Zila, it feels that, but it just seems like another opposition to be taken now. It doesn't seem like it's really life or death. Because if we don't take out the Udam, there will be no home for Winja and Oros. We take out Zila, same thing considerably, but they really don't have to worry about it. Especially because, remember, these are two groups in a big land. And so, all three groups, Winja, Udam, and Zila, they all fight each other. So, to me, that's the, like, split intrigue of it. So... Yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say about the two groups. But they both work in interesting peril. I obviously think U is a little bit more interesting of an antagonist than Batari because of how she moves with shit. And this pure fact that I feel like in the case for how Udam do stuff as a group and why U does what he does and his design, his voice actor, and the credit of the fact that I just feel like Udam is more interesting, that pulls me in I also just think they are like the definition, bare bones, set in stone, intricate setup of a primal group of people. While Zila, they touch the same feel, but they seem like something that you would maybe see like in an Aztec game. Something that's kind of out of the general play of primal instincts by stamp here. Granted, these are both talking about cases people in civilization stone age, but that's just, you know, how I perceive it in this regard. But even then, still, there's a lot of beautiful duet with these characters and why they do what they do. And I really do like how it's set up, especially Takar as a protagonist, which is a thing I wanted to go ahead and talk about in general. With the case of this first point obviously being about story, with the story, Takar is an instant protagonist with his voice actor, his feel, his design, his capabilities to be able to be a beast master, to have eyes of an owl in the sky, control ferocious, brutacious, mean beast, ride a mammoth off into the distance and siege beast different people, be able to feel the world around him like an ultimate warrior, more than the ideal staying sense of warrior feel that maybe you would feel for Jason Brody in the case of Far Cry 3. He is the natural instinct of any warrior, any man when they're put in a scenario where they have to fight like no other for survival. And that's what I really like. And I like in this story how it's all about gathering brothers and sisters for the best means of the people with you hunting killing, scavenging, to do those things. And at the end of the day, Takar just wants the best for his people. In the end, we're taking out Udam as a threat, at the same time with Zila, helping your people, growing a rich community, a sense of like Connor in a homestead, but I feel like on a more inner touching stellar sense, because with him helping out the case of matter of his people here, it is at the foundation of his entire character motive. Connor, what he wants to do is make a land where people can live and die and prosper. Someone like Takar, consider the same thing, it's all about just the better coming of his people, his race, fundamentally what he is. When you do the stuff you do as Connor, it's like making more solemn breath of fresh air for people that you don't know, showing your kind of showing the means of great purpose that Connor's always striving to fight for, right? In his own words, his responsibility never seems to diminish. There's always more than he needs to be fighting for. While Takar, when he says things said and done, he's founded it a living, a lineage, a people that will never be forgotten. The Winja are humanity at its core. And to me, 
that's very beautiful in the end because from what I heard for our primal is the only game with a happy technical ending every other ending is either a gray area a unfortunate path that the protagonist has went on flat out death or defeat or failure and a little stitch of also just like damn what's next don't know but I know it's gonna be a clash with the next hit you know what I'm saying but like with that being said as well I just think the story, even though not being as the most busting and peak thing, it's still a very solid thing to peek into, right? So, yeah, that's pretty much my whole thing with the story. But the next thing would involve the world. The world of Far Cry Primal is so beautiful. Oros is beautiful, even if it's made up. Even with the same time, the language being made up, even though it has, you know, baseness and inspiration from multi case of indigenous and. I would say uh, kind of like the central ancient matter of taking the language because obviously talking about a case of people that were alive during 2000 BCE language is dead beyond comprehension but the world expresses and embraces it in such an interesting way that I just feel so much with love and appreciation for it because of how unique it is at its core and then when it goes into bigger magical or intricate setups in the world like the case of Tenza drugging you and showing you different aspects of the spirit world feel being a mammoth and a legendary story or different clash and collide on different interesting fundamental different sides are all interesting to me and in the world of Oros you get to see Mother beautiful land lore feel different things just be had the most extravagant tech. I also just want to mention I love the cameo of obviously playing Far Cry 3 and seeing Buck of his like hypothetical ancestor, you know, Erky Larry being just a fucking like, cameo of the Buck actor and him voicing this character. I love that. I love the actor for Buck, man. Erky, I feel bad for him. Broken legs like shit probably. But yeah, regardless of talking about people catching CTE, simply put, I just feel like the world is so busting you can pull into and the map is so big and granted, I've heard that it's been a that it's like a ripoff or deliberately similar to like Far Cry 4. I haven't played Far Cry 4, but because Far Cry 4 is coming from wrong set in India in a place called what? Karat? Karat? Is it Karat or Karat? Where the fuck? Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Listen, newbie here. I plan to play Far Cry 4. Maybe backpedal 2, 1. I don't know. I just haven't been in my mind and main line. I've been busy crafting this stuff and life stuff. So I'm sorry if I haven't played like a whole new playthrough thing. I plan to do some stuff with For Honor when it comes down to the new hero. But besides the point, simply put, like, again, the world is so extravagant, busting with having the case of matter of stuff like that where you could take base from another game and make some intricate tie and more I guess dwell some more busting precaution and shit just because of how freaking open and diverse the world is from an inspired form thing like the case of matter of Far Cry 4 because it's because something similar to a world or even damn near copying some aspect doesn't disperse it of its uniqueness or a great sense of adventure because from what I know Far Cry 4 possibly could not be as adventurous as Primal even where it's set in beautiful India because simply put that the case of Far Cry Primal is taking place in an ancient side of the world that takes you down to the bone as roots, you know what I'm saying, of the being of a survivor, a hunter, a warrior, killer, some horrible credit. It's very extravagant and beautiful. Granted, I don't want to express the beauty of Far Cry 4, maybe I'll change my mind, but from what I know, this is a peak ass game in the grandstand for its world and feel. And to me, is the most unique in bare bones and going to the fullest sense of hype representation of a world that no form of game for what I've known except for maybe Ark Survival can bring you into in the same sense of it because of how so down to the ground so freaking general ground and immersive that it is it is so beautiful in every context feel aspect atmosphere you get so tapped in that it's so beautiful you feel me like it's just beautiful bro straight up but then we have gameplay. Now gameplay I feel like is the very versatile bit. Obviously with you being able to have multi case of beast as your pet and tame wild killer animals and ride mammoths and shit. It shows a great feel of cool credit of interesting feel. I heard in other games they kinda wanna take this method and use it in some field. The game that I heard today took this method and using it in form, even though it's not exactly on the same sense of taming pets as deliberately having pets. But being able to ride them and do some interesting shit with them in different forms is like Far Cry 5, but that's only from what I've heard. 
but then in the regard of like how they use the sense of like oh breaking the cycle of the same feel of their Far Cry games and going more extravagant and intricate with it is what makes it so peak to me especially because of the fact of you feeling super grounded and defined in the world. I heard of Far Cry 2, the main interesting appeal to some people about that game was the fact that in that game you feel so down to the core of what the stakes and interesting stellar story that it is in that game where you know weapons can break you're going through great case dilemmas trial and error throughout the entire game and you have rewards and punishments for adapting and growing from that in this game your weapons can break you have to craft to do more you have to learn adapt grow take on higher forces burst for all different kids a matter of walls to get to your higher capabilities to grow in power and potential that is what makes the game so interesting to me. Granted, there are some cons, I would say, with the overarching case of matter of gameplay. You know, like not having a block or counter button. You don't have a melee if you somehow break all your weapons. You have someone like, ooh, even though I think the boss fight is cool. This motherfucker literally is unstoppable until you pull out something that has to fucking destroy his insides. You have to get an HF blade to kill this motherfucker. This motherfucker took me fucking half an hour to go ahead and kill and that's fine enough for a boss if they have dope ass gameplay great challenge gameplay and ethics of the fact that they are a built different person he's built different beyond comprehension this nigga is built like a viltrumite he literally and figuratively cannot die by normal means you have to make a fucking B bomb to kill this motherfucker it feels like I threw so many spears have avalanches just drop on this nigga and he don't die I use at least like four avalanches in the game and then same time I took all case a matter of prowess and title capability that I could take him on and my grizzly bear which makes sense for the case of a boss except for like some like Batardi who's a smaller and no say shit woman that uses her far range and more tactical and space around her take you out while someone like ooh even though there's some strategic shit is just fucking big brute that's ready just to slug you out of commission right this motherfucker doesn't die and then again, the, the game seems to have like the most like weird since dumb AI, even though I get it, the game is just going about fun. And to be fair, these are problems for people. There can be strategic things, but the AI is kind of like all over the place, wild frenzy case people that do not move with actually any tactical essence except when they ultimately need to and it pretty much seems like the car can play around with these people granted don't get me wrong you can't fuck around and find out in this game i would say if you're playing on a general difficulty that's like you know normal to hard unless like it's in game i don't really think you have that much problem but i do think there's still difficulty i've heard multiple times that people have raised on this game and like the forts would die and especially like with a z loss because a z loss is very much more crafty than the Udom and they're like Hoyt's militia to Vaz's pirates. They are a lot more smarter and proficient and all pro count on account of actually decimating your chances at even feeling like a badass because they actually know what the fuck they're doing. Vaz's pirates are kind of just all whatever the fuck works activity and stagger multiple times or just moving. They do not know what the fuck they're doing on a greater half, you know, but I just think simply put that the way that some of these niggas fight and play is the most like weirdest thing on a greater do, right? But these are like high kid nitpicks in case of like mixed things. But I don't necessarily hate that idea. I do think the gameplay is very interesting from a case of matter again, primal stand, very cool shit. The capability to ride mammoths, tame beasts, to actually feel again immersed and full grounded to the fullest. The fact that you can physically not outrun a saber tooth. If a saber tooth is chasing you, it's death. It's GG's, man. I hope you start praying to whatever god you think you believe in at this time, nigga, because it's GG's. Your ass is getting took, you're getting ravaged. But as well, like, if we want to talk about boss fights, again, Udom's leader, U. He's cool, and the Cheatins are cool. They kind of play the same thing. Slugger build, which kind of makes sense for the sub-boss to the ultimate boss. As I heard, like in Far Cry 4, that if you take out these greater Imperial stains to places, right? That stand is like the foot ground of power for the final boss or whoever is the main head honcho that you have to face. They kind of stand as like it's a matter of a thing to expose weakness, destroy chances, and also at the same time perfectly fittingly 
body the case of the person in the long run like for weaknesses i would say that it's shown multiple times in xp and credit of string of different things that when you take out the case of these outposts or big ass fucking pedestal places of power that you have the chance of wrecking the chances of greater strength from someone like a zilas Lita, tari and U. But you don't necessarily have to to make a difference. Even though, granted, I definitely felt a lot more achievement and more easier access to them reasonably and fully. Especially because what is Eli? The case of the outpost beforehand is literally right outside the walls and construction of home for being the secure entrance of the place. So, yeah, to me, like, that's a simply said and done thing. But with someone like Batari. Where her boss fight is cool, she can very much one shot you with her arrow, she gets a good shot, you feel me, and pretty much puts you on one HP beyond comprehension of damn near no HP, but after just facing a bunch of goods and playing this arrow moves with her, and nothing more unique and exciting, as soon as she gets onto the same playground as you, you can literally sick your animal, do a takedown or do anything, and she gets done zoned immediately. I'm not saying it's the baddest thing, but in the grand scope, it is a one-off boss fight. And Batard, even though having some cool aspects during the ending of the fight, definitely being satisfying and with great showcasing of the arc of becoming pretty much stone cold when it comes down to fire. I don't know, man. It's kind of a mixed bar when it comes down to actually feeling impactful. Ooh's boss fight and every aspect of it felt impactful, felt like it was rumbling in the jungles. That's why I titled my <laughs> video when it came to face him that we rocking with Gorilla because he really felt like a beast, like someone that you cannot take out without going beyond an extra mile. And then in the end, his stuff feels very impactful and the ending seems to strike more better worth. But taking out Batardi seemed not to really matter that much beyond just, oh, we, we took out a fucking cult, you know what I'm saying? But Udom, we took out actual evil plague of madness to come to the wind drop they state. But as well, I really like the historical considerable accuracy and structure in the game. Obviously, this game is historical fantasy. It's very mixed and not very congruent or consistent to tell really the tales of a historical bit-by-bit -bit game that this game is. To be fair, the historical bit-by-bit -bit game is very stellar in its approach. You see, obviously, this game takes place in 10,000 BCE. And with that being said, we are in a time where all wonders of shit happen. We have accounts of animals, creatures, multi of different things, and possibilities of people's living. But a lot of it is fantasized. But I do like the fact that they stay accurate to the evolution of animals. They represent the language that represents different kinds of matter of animals and people strongly. Names, characters, feels, aspects, how people communicate, the characterization, all feels realistic and grounded. Even if there's wonder bows of wild things, they have killer animations, killer standpoints, killer defilement of what the game wants you to feel which in this case i really make this movie here clear in almost every game and i think that this is something that people should make be the case in a bunch of games but at the same time i don't see have a problem with you going beyond the purpose of just trying to set a person up with all their capabilities and back end of capabilities to be mortal but i really do like that in this case of context to full get to the point that in the world of far cry primal you feel mortal and you are mortal, but you also have a strike of a great deal of immeasurable strength and you are a beast like no other. Not entirely a beast in human skin of my man Jason Brody, but I definitely think you have enough onslaught of skill and capabilities as a nigga to really reconcile every standpoint of being the guy that the people that you're protecting and fighting for cherish the most because you are a champion of Oros. You are a legend and you full cultivate that. But even as a legend, you are a legend that is still grounded in the world of man. So no matter the case, this game makes you feel in touch with the mortal side and also a backside, you know what I'm saying, of being too brash, being too stupid, because the car is obviously more smart than a greater deal of different form of men and women in his tribe and others, but he still sticks out the fact that in the, the day, 
he is a caveman but he has a cave man's heart and soul mixed with true humanity in mind so to me that is what makes it interesting with the historical relevance and grounding but my final point to end this video with this being kind of a whole ramp and bigger talking point is simply put this what makes it so much of a defined game to me and makes it in conclusion I would say a 8.5 to them and 9 out of 10 is that the game feels like it's its own game it doesn't have to be aligned with Far Cry obviously it keeps Far Cry's roots within the game it stays in tune with it but as a sequel and technically in order being technically Far Cry 5 itself and striking a great deal of bars, like how AC Rogue did, even though not as good as my opinion. I'm not saying Far Cry Primal is better than AC Rogue, even though I do think Far Cry Primal has some better stuff than AC Rogue, but that's besides the point. It strikes a great deal of the bust and appeal and favorment that people have always been wanting from Far Cry. I feel like ever since the games after Far Cry 3, even though I have not played them, I have heard multiple times that they don't stand in the same bar of peak as Far Cry 3. Neither does Far Cry Primal. Far Cry 3 is one of, to possibly, what I've been to play the other game, by all accounts, the best game in the series. I don't think a lot of people would argue with that if you played the games. But Far Cry Primal stands so out and it's so unique to where, to me, being my first game, where I didn't need to play Far Cry 3. I didn't need to play Far Cry 1. I didn't need to play any of the game. It stands so divinely unique and feel. Weapons can break. Animals, creatures, brothers, everyone in this world feels so communicized and defined. You have children, people loving each other in multiple ways I cannot say for YouTube reasons. And just being people and everything in the grounds of this it feels so communicized. Like for me, other games I've heard in Far Cry 3, regardless of the community you can meet and have be mildly burdened to different sense of matter of intrigue and intricacies of take and play. It never feels as if you truly are the person in the game. It feels like you're more seeing how the person does stuff through their eyes. To me, everything Takar does, everything you do in the game, I feel like truly matters. How you approach things, how you fight, how you hunt, how you gather, how you scavenge, how you sleep, how you move. Especially you're playing on pretty much one life difficulty. Everything's so extravagant and defined for how it plays into play. And that's what I love so much about it. It is a beautiful, profound game, ladies and gentlemen. And that is why, to me, Far Cry Primal is the most underappreciated. Because this game stands as a testament to what people who actually care and give a damn about the game beyond the case of money and the recycle of the same thing or the iconic statement that's been put upon a lot of game developments. But I feel iconically, as obviously the company that built the statement of did I ever tell you the definition of insanity is sparked a whole new case of matter of meaning and purpose and sentiment for it beyond proportion right because it is just a external thing that stands most account of people's minds because how iconic their villain it can tag in his vases where it is a multi run of the same thing back to back and trying to be different but never making a difference Far Cry Primal cut that unfortunate lynch wire that I feel like some people in Ubisoft or even the company was trying to break but could never because they were just trying to rehang the case of matter of the standpoint of peak that Far Cry 3 set up and never could actually make a fundamental true new tracing of peak into play because they never could come back to those roots or make a new rule. Now granted, I've never played the other case matter of games. I'm hoping to, but from all accounts and the way Far Cry Primal seems in comparison to different accounts and looks and images of the other games, it stands so peak because it founded a whole different system for the games and made you really re-admire the sense of what Far Cry is, which at the end of the day is a world about, I feel like, means of survival, Outcasts, underdogness, and fundamentally new spiraling out of crazed instincts and antics to the fullest. You are playing a man that does everything he does to define himself as a man doing what he's doing because it is the way of the world, because at the end of the day, he's fighting for home. 
civilization. Every other game, in some sense, tries to reconcile that. But Far Cry Primal does it in a better way, because again, you are doing something that is the of man, doing something that is the fireman of new gracing, of purpose, and even power, for not himself, but for the people behind him. He's the custom of what it means for a man that's going to war for the people behind him, and not because he just feels like it. It's all to keep what matters the most to any man or woman. And that is home, survival, life. And that's the beauty of it. That's all I have to say. I've been for a great deal of long time. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and this video. It's kind of more of a rant and talk. I had been talking points, but for the case of the matter of now, damn near fucking 40 minutes, I pretty much ran to my beer boat. A lot of people have talked about why this game is so peak. I just want to go ahead and give my two cents and greater feel of it. And yeah, I love y'all. I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace out, Marmy. Bye, y'all.